I, Dr. Rohit Vastogi, Associate Professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering, ABES Engineering College, Ghaziabad, welcome you all. So this is the lecture series and in continuation of my previous lecture in Computer Organization and Architecture. Today I am taking the bus arbitration methods. So my dear students and listeners, what is a bus and what do you mean by arbitration and what is method? So method is a particular technique or arrangement for a specific process and arbitration means some specific architecture or arrangement to solve a problem. And here the basic requirement is of bus. Bus is a medium or a way to move the analog signals in form of digital bits 0 and 1 in binary form and these binary digits are transferred systematically through the bus. As per the need of the binary bits, the buses are of different types. So here as we discussed that bus is uh, actually a set of wires which is used to share the data. And as for the width of the data, the buses are of 32 bits or of 64 bits. And every bus has a clock speed which is measured in megahertz or gigahertz. So if I say that the bus has containing 4 megahertz speed means 4 into 10 to the power 6 bits are being transferred at a time. And if I say that there are a bus which is having 2 gigahertz speed, it means that it will proceed, it will process the data in terms of 2 to power 30 into 2 bits, means 2 to power 31 bits at a time. So a bus is required to make interconnection between the different components of CPU. As we can see that a processor can be understood with four components where first is ALU, other is memory, third is IO processor and other one can be understood as control unit to design the control signals. So data is being operated inside the ALU in terms of arithmetic logic and shift operations. It may be stored or it may be written back and it can be extracted from the memory. And the IO devices are being processed through IO processor and control unit is responsible for generating signals. So these all four, four components design the CPU, central processing unit, which is the brain of the computer and Buses are the medium which are used to interconnect among these four components. So advantage of buses is that these are of very low cost and very versatile for different nature it is being used. And the disadvantage is that it is dedicated to particular device. So sharing can contain many times different problems. The examples of buses are ISA, industry, standard architecture, Buses EISA means Extended Industry Standard Architecture, SCSI Small Computer System Interconnect, and PCI Peripheral Connect in Connect Component Interconnect. These are the buses which are used for different purposes. As per as we know well that the data is of mainly three types: data, address, and control signals. So whenever the data bits are being transferred through the bus, it is called as data line. Whenever the control signals are being transferred, like read or write operation through different devices, this is called control line. And whenever the address signals are being transferred through the address uh, bus, this is called address line. Also, there are various types of buses, point-to-point -point buses, multi-port buses, processor memory buses, IO buses, and backlane buses. So here, as per the need and as per the nature and as per the usage of the buses, different nomenclature have been done. So here we can say that as per 
the connection as per the architecture there are two types of buses dedicated buses and multiplex buses dedicated bus which is particularly dedicated for a specific task and it may be for the functional dedication or the physical dedication and multiplex bus when it is in the shared mode like a same bus is being used to transfer the data lines and the same bus is being used for transferring the address data in dedicated buses we can understand that the advantage will be that it is we having high efficiency and less waiting time for the device and in multiplex bus there will be fewer lines so they will be having less cost and less space this advantage of dedicated bus that these are costly because they are particularly catering a single device or a specific device but multiplex buses they are having less performance and they are having inside complex interconnection circuits so classification of buses on the basis of personal computers we can say that there are internal system buses external or expansion buses and local buses so usually we apply the data buses for operation of on the or the manipulation on the data whenever the buses are being catered to different components so all the components are having desire or the temptation to attend the bus for their serving the different task so to allocate the bus to different devices it is called as the bus arbitration method there are three bus arbitration methods decision method polling method and independent request method in daisy chain method it is coming the term from the european daisy flowers where there is a sequence of daisy flowers one by one and they are interconnected to each other here we can also see that the device one or a module one is interconnected to module two and this is interconnected to module three and so on up to all the modules are interconnected there is a signal there is a component which is called bus arbiter and it is acting as a master and it is providing the grant and reject of the bus service to different components so bus arbiter is providing the grant signal to module 0 and then this grant signal will be transferred to module 1 and up to module n if there is a problem inside any module then the grant signal will not be forwarded and the bus signal will be hampered at the same instant. Whenever a grand signal is allocated to a particular module, then the busy signal of this module is being one and for other, the busy signal is zero. So whenever the bus is available for the service or catering the different device, then busy signal will be zero because it is free, it is available and it can be allocated to a particular device. In other time, all the modules are sending the request to the bus arbiter and as per the need as well as the distance of the bus arbiter to a different module the bus grant permission is allocated so this is all about the daisy chaining method so you can understand well what are the advantage and disadvantage of this method in daisy chaining method the design is very simple and control lines are very less so new bus master addition is very easy in the same pattern you can add the bus master but the disadvantage is that this is a very rigid structure thus nth module is actually dependent on the n minus 1s module if the previous any particular module is failed then the catering of the service will not be given to the next module so application of daisy chaining that it is suited for less number of computers in polling method, it is based on it is uh, inspired from the election process where a particular vote is given to a particular device, a candidate. Similarly, bus arbiter generates a particular device, generates a particular signal for a particular device, and only that device is given the bus signal, bus services, and other devices are in the waiting queue. So a particular signal for, for example, 101 is generated then the device number five, because 101 is in terms of decimal is five, the device number five will be catered and other devices will be in the waiting queue. 
Similarly, they are making requests. So advantage of this method that this is the flexible one. And if any module fails, then other system will not be failed. This advantage of this method that it is difficult to increase the number of address lines and in the web circuit to add the ninth bus master, we need four address lines. Why? Because the number nine, there are nine devices and this is designed by in bindy 1001. So four address lines will be required. And up to nine to 15, we will be requiring four address lines from 16 to 31 will be requiring five address lines. So even for 16 modules, we will be requiring five address lines. So it is a bit one costly also. The application of polling method that it is suited for the big networks, which demand the good reliability and decent priority scheme with control cost. The performance will not be the most important parameter for such networks because we are providing the services to a specific device. Other method is independent request method where all the request and grant signals for individual device and module are independent. So bus arbiter has a separate mechanism for individual module and it catches the modules as per the, uh, their priority and as per their response time. So if any module request provides the request and if bus is free, the bus arbiter provides the bus to that module. But the advantage is it is very simple and short method and as well as dedicated request and grant signals are allocated to individual modules. But the problem is that a number of request and grant signals will have to be allocated. And if the number of modules are increased, these signals will also be increased. So more analog signals, more control lines we have to float. So number of control lines are very much suited for N lines because for one module, there are two lines are required for N module. So two N lines will be required. So hardware cost will be very high and hardware complexity will increase. Application of this method, it is well suited for the big network, like in huge organization, where we need the separate service from the server. And the cost is not an issue and performance is a key requirement. So we don't want that failing of a particular module may hamper the performance of the other module. So my dear students, with this discussion, I'm sure that you'll be able to compare between among all the three modules. And we can see that in, the, in terms of performance measurement, the chaining method is poor and polling method provides a better performance and independent method provides the more uh, best performance. In terms of reliability, daisy chaining uh, gives the poor response and polling and independent method are good. Priority mechanism, daisy chaining has no priority. It waits for its sequence and as, uh, as the previous uh, modules are not requesting, only then the other module will get the service. And in polling method and the independent method, the priority mechanism is there. So as per the need, the service will be provided. Addition of new device, here it is very easy, but here we have to check about the selection signals. And here also the adding the new device will make additional hardware cost. So it is good for only a small number of systems like three to five. It is good for 10 to 12 systems and for large systems, independent method is best. In terms of application, we can see that it is used in the small network, it is used for the large network, and it is used for the very big organization where cost is not an issue. <coughs> so these are the references where you can get all the data and more material for a study. And I'm sure that you have enjoyed this lecture and got some insights about the topic. So I, Dr. Rohit Rastogi from Department of Computer Science and Engineering from ABS Engineering College, Kazibad. Bless you all, and I'm sure that in coming time, we will be meeting with more new contents and new topics. Thank you very much, and stay safe, stay blessed. Bye-bye.